Hi, my name is Phil Jump, and I'm the chair of Churches Together on Merseyside, and I'm the Baptist Regional Minister for Merseyside, North Wales, and the Northwest. And I'm joined by my colleague Ellen Loudon, who I work with in a number of contexts. And Ellen, just introduce yourself to us and tell us about your work with the Diocese of Liverpool and beyond. Thanks, Phil. So I'm Ellen Loudon. I'm Director of Social Justice for the Diocese of Liverpool and Canon Chancellor at the Cathedral. And uh, a lot of my work is to do with social justice and um, enabling activists and various other people to explore ways that they can make a bigger difference in the world. And one of the things that we do together as churches together on Merseyside is try and find ways of helping churches to support refugees and asylum seekers and support those organisations that that provide that. And uh, recently, some of the people that we helped were at a conference and they came back and some of the stuff that they shared with us, we really found quite disturbing. And it was kind of that that, that got us to want to make this little video yeah. together. Do you want to say a bit more about that? So yes, yeah, some colleagues of ours from um, uh, from Faiths for Change and from Asylum Link organised a meeting um, of people that are, that are working with asylum seekers and refugees, displaced people in not just the city but the city region, and um, some uh, some really, as you say, disturbing news around what that what has been a, a change in protocols. It's not so much a change in policy, but in the way that the Home Office is working with refugees who are given leave to remain in this country. So refugees who are here and have status in this country, um, pre as they've had moved from having accommodation when they've been seeking um, a status in the country, they've been given accommodation. But what's happening to them that instead of being asked, once they get leave to remain, asked to leave within 28 days, they've been told that they need to move within seven days. And that's an incredibly short amount of time for somebody who, uh, for anybody who's um, not necessarily um, aware of all the ways that, that that this country works in terms of finding secure housing, but also they won't have benefits, won't have kicked in, and or they won't necessarily be able to find a job within a week. So it's a really hard situation for people who find themselves suddenly homeless after a week. So, so let me just get get this straight. We're, we're talking here about people who have come to this country as refugees. They've they've been assessed, they've been investigated, and and they've been given refugee status. So That's these correct, are people yeah. who've come to this country because they are facing danger, even potentially death in their in their country. And and they, these are genuine asylum, well, genuine refugees. Yeah. And and they they're being given a week to basically just completely restart their lives exactly and, and also yeah. not only with their accommodation but whilst they were seeking asylum they would have also been had recourse for some funds so what not a huge amount of money um but they would have had but within a week they are there though that funding is withdrawn and they are asked to leave their secure accommodation so they are essentially like moved at uh, displaced again having being given leave to remain in this country. So suddenly not knowing where to live, who's going to support them and not having any money or any additional support. Now they can sign on, but as we know, the the, the benefits process can take anything up to three months. So it's actually a really difficult situation. And it's difficult if you don't have somewhere to live, don't have a bank account and don't have anywhere secure that you can actually go to, to be able to, to, make the most of of any benefits or any other systems and i mean some, some churches are responding to this need um and there are some great things happening um sadly in the in the face of this but i, I mean i think why we wanted to make this video particularly was because we simply wanted people particularly the christian community but not just the christian community as british citizens to know that this is the way people are being treated in our name this is how we I, I guess the values that we consider to be our shared values you know the question we want to ask is does this represent what we would understand you know i think many people are concerned about the scale of migration people are concerned about all sorts of things but is this the kind of welcome that we as british citizens want to see extended in our name to people who are have been found to be refugees yeah, and absolutely. i guess churches yeah 
we I mean we we know that we have um we've extended an a, a warm and generous welcome to Afghans who've who've needed to leave their country because we as British citizens have taken responsibility for them. And and all the same with Ukrainian um refugees. We've extended uh, a welcome to them. And and what I don't and what is what I am struggling with, and I think many of us are struggling with, is that these are people who are have come from their countries, various countries, and we're not extending the welcome that we are used to as a nation and as a Christian community, and as you say, British citizens, we're not used to this kind of level of of um lack of generosity and and welcome we you know if i was found to need to leave my country uh, and i was given leave to remain i would hope that somebody that that a nation would treat me with um with with a bit more kindness mm. Yeah, and I mean, you know, we are both Christian ministers and I guess the words of Jesus, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you come come to mind yeah. when you say that. And it's strike. I mean, the contrast that comes to my mind is, you know, I, I mean, there's a disproportionate number of people in this plight in our city of Liverpool because this is where a lot of people find themselves when they're in the asylum system. And the contrast for me with Eurovision when, you know, I know there was a lot of fun and frivolity, but but it also stood as a symbol of our solidarity with the Ukrainian people, the displaced people, and this yeah, seems yeah. to be such a massive contrast to that. I, it does, and and it's I because I think people aren't aware of it. I think that it will be a shock. It will be a shock that we're not um, because we're used to that generosity. We're used to treating people in a way that um, in uh, that that. Um, treats their humanity and and doesn't leave them without um, without hope. And I think that's what's really struck me. And we're talking so in 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 terms of numbers. My understanding is Asylum Link, who you know we work really closely with Phil, don't we? We Asylum Link since August have met over a hundred people who uh, are finding themselves homeless because of this because of this situation. As you say, because of the number of people that that the Home Office house here, uh, legitimately, because this is a a place where people come for the, you know for their last resort for that to for their claim, um, that that we are we potentially would be facing through this winter up to five thousand people who will be processed. Now that's an awful lot of people, and that's an awful lot of people that 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 we in the voluntary community, faith, and social enterprise sector. I don't think we have the capacity to to deal with this on this scale at this notice, and and I and um, I, I'm not sure what what we're going to be able to do. And I think that's why we kind of wanted to make this video because we recognise yeah. our churches across Merseyside are incredibly diverse. Um, there'll be different opinions about this. Some of us may want to write to MP. Some of us may be able to say, can we respond? Can we provide something as a church? But we simply want you as our sisters and brothers in Christ to know about this yeah. and to just think about how we as Christian people respond to what is happening in the nation that we call home. So, Ellen, thank you for talking to me. Thank and you. we just both hope that... Just, just invite really everyone. That, yeah, go on. Yeah, just to know that it's happening and to understand what the consequences of these of the choices that are being made at this moment are. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, and thank you for listening to us.